You're listening to the Law Frog Radio Show with David McDivitt and Ross Ford on Kilo 94.3 FM, presented by McDivitt Law Firm. Hey, lawyers are like that. They can make you sweat it out sometimes. You know what I'm doing over the phone is I'm just, I'm glaring at you. I'm giving you lawyer eye. (laughs) He's bird dogging. That's right. Um, Let's see, before we get into the segment today, and we got uh, two already on hold. We got an open phone line. If you want some time with Dave, you best get in now at 633 Kilo. And the case of the double wide. Double cross. Coming up in just a few minutes. Real quick, though, before we get to that, man, do you need any assistance? Do you need any, like, part-time help downtown? Because... They just put the new uh, Pikes Peak Brewing Tap House next to your place downtown on Tejon, and it is awesome. I would love to do lunch there every day and have you pick up the tap. Ooh, yeah, we should Ross, do, we should it, do one of those. It's not just that. that the, the, the next place over to Kawadi. Yeah, I met that guy got, a while I don't back. Know if it's open yet, but it's got incredible stuff, and then you get to Fat Sully's and... Uh, Streetcar. Streetcar, and then uh, Coffee Exchange, and then you turn the corner. I mean, you know, Fat Sully's is part of that whole Atomic Cowboy. Right. And, and there's like a new brewery going to be going across the street from the old field house. Is like a Red Swing or something like that, I think. Oh, man. Great. Now, you know, obviously, they're building the stadium, hey. the Switchback Stadium. I think the Kilo Studio should be in the law. From the law offices of David McDivitt, it's the Kilo Morning Show. And I can yes. just hang out in the corner. Jane Addiction. <laughs> right? Well, th- you think about it, all right? You're not using your office, right? No, I'm, I'm working remotely. Oh, can I use your office, Mr. McDivitt? <laughs> just... Bring some hand sanitizer, okay? Blue, blue, blue. I'll be the only guy rocking shorts in that whole building probably, huh? That's awesome. They will, by the way, if they see you, they will call security. <laughs> they, they probably would, actually. <laughs> they see you walking they're like, who is this guy? <laughs> that's probably, that's so true. Oh, that is no, so true. Right, All right, uh, before we get to some uh, help for the people, my friend, yep. uh, one thing I wanted to remind you was a story we had earlier this week, and we've been talking, obviously, COVID has been very much commonly spoke of in this segment. Yep. Uh, from people who felt they were exposed to it at work, wh- where they have, and there was really, there's nothing that they have right now. But uh, we mentioned as well, it's similar to the AIDS virus. When AIDS first came out, there was no punishable offense for people who had only spread AIDS. But eventually then they would find out, hey, you had a positive test at this point, you had sex with this person you didn't disclose, and then those people were prosecuted. And there could be a chance we get to that with COVID-19. And I point to one case, this is a U.S. citizen overseas, who took a test, was told because of symptoms, self-quarantined for two weeks, didn't. She went out, went to pub crawls, infected, they think, at least 56 other people now. Is, is something like that then going to be the smoking gun where you can then point to her and she will be punishable? Is well, that ever going to be a thing? Okay, sure. So possibly. Now, you've got a couple of different tracks that can take. One of them, obviously, the one that's going to really stick is going to be the, the criminal prosecution because you can get, I mean... You don't need special legislation to to be able to prosecute somebody for something like that. I mean, that's that's knowingly and intentionally, you know, harming other people. Really? So at this point, that would be almost like a drunk driving case. You, Absolutely. You intentionally. Yeah, or, or, or some, you know, kind of assault huh. battery type of thing. Okay. But the other thing, though, too, civilly, I mean, there's nothing right now, unless, they're, unless they pass legislation saying you cannot sue somebody who's intentionally trying to distribute or give you COVID. I mean, you can always sue. The question is, what are you going to get out of it? Too. And so somebody who is going to pub crawls who knowingly has COVID strikes me as the kind of person who has not historically made good life decisions um, if they're of that kind of character. So they probably haven't created, you know, a major tech company and they haven't probably <laughs> squirreled away several billion dollars. They're a, they're a dirt bag and you're not going to get anything from a dirt bag is basically you what go. you're saying. Yeah. That so, makes, I mean, you can sense. sue them until you're blue in the face and you can get judgments against them and then, you know, and you can... You can try to collect on the judgment by garnishing their wages, assuming they have a job. And, you know, let's assume that they're maybe they make minimum wage. And so you can imagine if you get a you know, you're sick or you lose a loved one and you get a massive judgment against them. Let's just say let's throw out a, uh, I'm just a hundred thousand dollar judgment. Right. Or a million dollar judgment. You I can pick your number. Yeah. And then and then so you have to slowly, slowly garnish little slivers of their wages uh, for years and years and years. I mean, it's just it's pointless at that point. Wow. The legal the legal mistress is hard, a hard woman, isn't she? Well, but she's got a right hand and she's got a left hand. Yeah. Right. And so maybe what she can't do so well with her left hand, she can really drive a punch with her right hand. And that's where the criminal uh, stuff will come into play. It doesn't necessarily help the victims out. Uh, gives them peace of mind and, and ensures that this kind of behavior doesn't continue from that person and it deters other people. But they could, you know, you know, they could throw the book at the person who did it, assuming you've got 
uh, you know, a prosecutor who really wants to do that, and then you end up getting, um, whether you get a plea deal or it goes to a trial, you get a jury wants to do that. I mean, it, it it's not an overnight process. It takes a long time. Very interesting. Uh, Dave McDivitt is our guest. The Law Frog segment, you want him, you got him. Uh, Rockland is open. We've got one open line at 633-KILO. And then real quick before we jump into the new, including the case of the double white, double cross. Dun, dun. Um, last week we had a guy who was, he, he claims falsely accused, of, uh, falsely accused of domestic violence and, and all kinds of stuff. He was trying to trying to get that uh, thrown off. We didn't get a chance to talk to him on the air. He hit us up afterwards. Did you find anything good for him? Yeah, no. You don't have to go into too much detail. And I don't want to keep his story as private as possible. But. Yeah, yeah. I, I've got to do that. If that I mean, that, that's okay. Okay, that's um, fine. But you, yeah. you, you reach out. You guys have talked, huh? Yes. Good. Yeah. All right. See, so there you go. If you do need some uh, some quiet time with David and don't meet Jack Aston and interfering, <laughs> you can feel free to reach out to the McDivitt Law Firm and uh, track him down for free yeah, consultation. Yeah, and, and, and Ross, you know, let me yeah. put. A, I have a private number for people who want a uh, really quiet time. It's a joke. I don't. <laughs> it's one eight hundred lawyer stud. That's S T U D D, right? S T U D D D D. You know what? That's probably a phone number for real. So that's probably, how sad this world is. We pronounce it studs. Right, studs. Okay, uh, let's uh, get to it. We're going to pick up the uh, rock lines here, find a couple folks there. We're going to conquer our email question. If you got something, hit us up, 633 Kilo or toll free 800. You're listening to the Law Frog Radio Show with David McDivitt and Ross Ford on Kilo 94.3 FM, presented by McDivitt Law Firm. I'll tell you what, or a single dad. I'm, Dude, I don't know how good I am at either one of them. Frankly. I bet Charlie Manson, you know, post uh, his death, he wishes he had you as his lawyer. Well, you know, we would have had a, a, I'm not sure we would have connected. And he would have been like 10 years old probably, right? Yeah. This guy might be crazy, but set him free. That's right. <laughs> All right. Well, let's see Where's here. My transformer. Before the uh, double Y, double cross, which is interesting because it's an interesting question, but more so this lady's just looking for, for affordable help when it comes to, to conquering the legal system, because as we learned, it's a tough place to be sometimes. So uh, uh, answers to that in a minute. First, where's Mike? Over here on line one, I believe. Mikey, ah. is that you? Can you hear me now? Yes, there I Yes, sir. All right. So your brother was in family court over something, and he wanted a court-appointed lawyer, right? Right. Well, and the judge. And his, his girl that he was with. See, he wasn't even with his girl when the whole incident happened. And the mom was the one that actually you know, had the whole incident happen with the kids getting taken in the first place. So my brother didn't even have any charges or crimes against him. Okay, so he's pulled uh, into this case because of someone other's actions. Well, he wants his kids back. Yeah. Who, who is, Michael, who has custody of his child? Um, I really don't even know right now. I mean, she's actually signed paperwork over that says that, that my brother gets full custody, but the courts won't even allow that paperwork to even go through. Huh. Have they explained why? Sorry, I'm getting into the details. I, this is near and dear to my heart because I've got full custody of my kids. and that's so Yeah, so this is the thing that's really, it, the whole case, it just doesn't make any sense. None of it does. Like the, the reason that they were taken in the first place was uh, negligence, but they were at mom's house. So dad was like, hey, I want to take them. My brother was. I want to take the kids. I can have them at my house. I got beds. I got everything ready to go. But it's been a year later, and they refused to actually give the kids back to my brother. Man, that's tough. It's tough. Uh, and obviously, your brother wants legal representation. So his legal rights, they're supposed to get a court-appointed right. judge. Isn't that right I believe, there, Dave? I believe that's the Fifth Amendment. Well, here's, here's, when it comes to lawyers that are court-appointed and they're therefore free to you kind of through the court system, to my, the best of my knowledge, it's only in a criminal context that you're entitled oh. to, because you're actually entitled um, to have a lawyer represent you. And, you know, we see it in the movies. If you cannot afford one, one will be appointed for you. That right, is that's the, the uh, Miranda context. rights. What did you say? Miranda rights. No, that doesn't Miranda. have Yeah, your Miranda, Miranda rights. rights. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the criminal context. And, and, and really, it's even more limited than that. It's typically... Only if the charges against you could result in a sentence involving jail time. It's where they're going to deprive you of your actual liberty. So it's when the state is actually prosecuting you. Yeah. Then yeah, you get a free some, lawyer. Some, right, where the state or, um, yeah. Um, but, uh. okay, yeah, the idea is then that you um, are entitled to constitutionally, you know, to, to an attorney. And, and every state has a different system for that. Uh, you know, in Colorado, we have 
a public defender system. It's a, a state-centered system. It's funded by the state. And then, um, you know, if there's some kind of conflict of interest, then they have private attorneys who act as, you know, alternative defense counsel who, can, who, are, who are on a list, a rotating list, and they'll get appointed uh, to that particular case. In, family, in a family law matter, which is a, it's a, it's a civil, not a criminal um, now, there, there can be criminal charges that kind of go along with a, a family law issue. Well, I'm, I'm kind of thinking that because this has taken so long and because the court system is actually dragging their feet, the kids are actually being abused in the foster care system. So do we have a civil matter of what's happening in the court system on the, on the foster kids side? It, it, um, it's tough to make a claim against the court system itself. I mean, if you are aware of actual abuse in the foster care home, that's a different matter, and you can refer that. You know, you can contact police and, and contact the district attorney, um, wherever yeah. the jurisdiction is. But in the, you know, getting back to your family law question, there there might be some attorneys who are willing to work on a pro bono basis, which means for free, basically, to help your brother out. There are clinics, and I don't know how easy it is to access this. That's the one problem, you know, in El Paso County, we don't have a law school here. We only have two law schools in Colorado. We've got really? one in Denver at DU and then one in, in Boulder at, at University of Colorado. And both of those schools have clinics uh, where they will provide assistance, where you'll get basically law students who can help you out. Yeah. Um, and it's typically free if you qualify, and oftentimes they'll have a, a clinic that has to do, you know, that there might be a family law clinic where they could provide a law student supervised by an attorney, a, a, you know, a faculty member there at the university, a licensed attorney overseeing it, but that, that attorney, the, that law student would yeah, be does all the, help. Yeah, does all the work, does all the footwork for them. Yeah, and, you might, and it would be worth reaching out to them. Right. I don't know if they've got the clinic, and I don't know that they can really serve, you know, jurisdictions outside of, you know, the, the Denver Boulder wider area there. Um, but there are other hmm. resources. Um, That's tough know, because right now the, the, the kids are suffering the most. But a year not in a home with, with someone who truly loves them. And it's obvious it'd be better at the father's house, but the legal wheels must turn and they turn yeah, they, awful they, slowly. They, they, listen, when you get into the foster care system too, it just, it's, it can be a really painful process yeah. for everybody. And so I'm sure the kids have a guardian ad litem who's been appointed for them to represent their best interests in the court system. And, um, you, you know, your brother might need to be in contact with the guardian ad litem to, to make sure that he understands exactly what's being done. Um, and then I think it would be worth just trying to, to reach out and look for some resources that might be able to help your brother out so he can get some legal advice on this and understand exactly why the process is taking as long as it is and what he can do to speed up the process or to try to get his kids back. Yeah. Well, good luck, Michael. We'll tell you. I got you on hold. We'll get some information to you yeah. here off the air. In the meantime, get ready. We're going to conquer a uh, big email. You're listening to the Law Frog Radio Show with David McDivitt and Ross Ford on Kilo 94.3 FM. Presented by McDivitt Law Firm. He's easy to find. Com. There you go. Uh, 800. Can I say the number? Go, do it, do it, do it. He does it really smoothly. He should, be, should have been on radio. Go ahead. 800. All right, here we go. Here we go. Everybody, buckle up. 800-800-8543. Wow, look at that. That's smooth. I just want to call it just to, just because. Do you know what I did one time? <laughs> what? I called I called a hotel in Las Vegas and asked them to put me on hold because it was, what's his name, Steve Wynn? Yeah. I think that's his first name. The guy who owned the Wynn and a few other hotels. Because he had the whole, he was the voice of the hold music. Really? And then the way he just described it, he's like, when you come and stay at Wynn Hotels, <laughs> you'll be treated to luxurious massages and lobster dinners every day. And I'll tell you what, our entertainment is second to none. But the way he does it was just, in, I, I literally called, hey. I said, look, just put me on hold. I just want to listen to Wynn's voice for a while. That, by the way, is the first time we've ever had a David Wynn impersonation on the show. That's the first. <laughs> so, so few first here in what we do. Well, I can impersonate all sorts of things and people. Just all right. Poorly, all of it, poorly. All right, we can finish up with Mike. Uh, and he, his case, his brother's case was in Missouri, so we had to turn him on to, he's got to find law schools in Missouri to benefit from their kind of pro bono court Yeah, cases, or, or, right? and, and also or to work. maybe local bar associations in, a, in and around where his brother lives. And they can, oftentimes, will have a referral service right. where they can give you names of attorneys who might be able to have the capacity to do some additional pro bono work or might be able to help out and... 
I find a lot of answers at my local bars. So I think, yeah, yeah, that's always a great start. There's always an answer, whether it's the right answer or not, at the local bar. All right, David's got to take kids to school here soon. His kids are back. Does it feel good to drop them back off again? Is it weird? Oh, my gosh. When I dropped them off yesterday morning, I was just so proud of myself. I'm like, I did it. I got them to school. (laughs) They're away. They're alive. They haven't killed each other. And I have to go home. And Daddy loves you, kids. Don't you worry. That's right. But Let's uh, help out Tasha. She's got some issues. On a few yeah. different levels. This is a heartbreaking email, too. So, uh, the long story short, purchased a three-bedroom trailer off a family friend who okay. uh, were having issues with a man who was going to purchase the trailer, but stopped paying once he moved into the trailer. Uh, the family friends we bought the trailer from are deaf, and apparently the man has been taking advantage of them because of their inability to communicate. So, since December 2019, he's been in the trailer and since finding out that they now own the trailer, he stopped covering the lot rent to the park. Okay. So he talked to the lot manager, and she said if she was to evict this guy, that in turn would evict them from the trailer park. So she's looking for some pro bono or low-income eviction attorney okay. that she can talk to um, because she obviously doesn't have a whole lot of cash. Uh, and now looking at a big bill to just move into her place. Yeah. And then sadly enough, the additional thing, winter's coming soon. We've been sleeping in the car, uh, saving for a place. The car charges four sixty a month for lot rent. So if we don't get it soon, we're not going to have to cover, we're not going to have enough money to cover the thousands in past due from this guy. Okay. who's basically just squatting. He's a squatter. Yeah. yeah so right. I'm, so as I'm thinking here, I've, I finally got it. You know, my eyes are closed. I've stopped trying to diagram this on a piece of paper, but I've got it. This guy's living in a trailer that they now own. And, and, and regardless of what he did to the prior owners who were deaf and he was taking advantage of them, he now is uh, he's squatting in a trailer that they own, that Tasha owns. He is not covering the lot rent. Now, I don't know if he's paying, making payments to Tasha now or if he's not making payments to anybody, but he's got some kind of presumably there is or there should be some kind of rental agreement. Now, whether it's in pay, I don't know what it looks like. And if he's paying month to month, if this, this is a, an agreement, then it kind of carries over and they tend to bake in like a month to month type of right. term if, if you kind of expire and, and nobody's initiated an eviction process. Is he paying rent to her? So, Tasha, is he paying you rent still, but he's just not covering the lot rent? Or I would is, assume not. Let's yeah, just assume he's not. Too. And let's assume there is no paperwork that he kind of duped the original couple into letting it in, saying, like, right. all right, I'm going to here's 400 bucks. I'll give you the next 400 next month, don't worry, and then stops right when he gets his foot in the door. Right. Because so there are people what, that do this. Like, they're professional squatters that yeah. float around from houses and houses. No, know? I know. And so one of the things that she, hey, look, uh, we can get her the name of a couple of, of resources when we get off the air here. But the other thing, too, and I don't know, and because I don't know much about the, the uh, relationship of the people who manage these properties and then the people who own or live in the uh, mobile homes, but it could be that as long as she's covering the lot rent, so then as lo- that, that means that that trailer is allowed to be there, yep. then her issue becomes purely with the guy who's squatting in her own trailer. That's more of a private issue. And then if she initiates, she personally initiates eviction proceedings. If she can do that against this guy who's squatting, we can get him out and, you know, then she can move in without having the concern that the people who manage the mobile home park kind of kick her trailer out. Because if you're looking at two different things. You're looking at man in trailer and looking at trailer itself. Right. And trying to divorce those two from each other it's so like, that one doesn't immediately follow the other. It's like the trailer park version of Inception. Where they yes. have five different levels of stuff here to sift through, huh? Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. I so mean, it's crazy. There really no easy answers with this, right? Because you need some answers to questions. Again, whether this is paperwork. Yeah. All right, so let, let's just assume right. uh, no paperwork. Um, they have paperwork claiming they now own the trailer. How, right. do they, how do they go through the process of getting this guy evicted? It's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a, a month or more deal, isn't it? Take a while? Uh, yeah, yeah. I, usually I'd say 30 to 45 days. Whoa. It's actually out of there. But it involves, you know, filing the paper with, with the yeah. court. And there are, listen, there are... Um, if you go to the, um, the, the, the website for our court system, you know, then there is, you know, the Fourth Judicial District Court website will be, there are links to documents and, and forms that you can fill out to, to initiate an eviction process. And then you, you basically have to get a hearing, assuming that the courts are open for that hearing, <laughs> you know, yeah, right. because of COVID. And Good then you get God. in there, you get in front of a judge, this, the squatter, you know, it may not appear. You've got to p- p- put notice up and everything. And then let's say you get an eviction order, then you have to ultimately get the sheriff to come in and to evict the guy. And then it's like we talked about last time. The guy doesn't 
you know, if you've got a lawful court order saying, buddy, you got to get out of here, and, you know, he doesn't vacate, and the sheriff comes to get him out, and then he, you know, he, he v- refuses to do that, then he can actually get arrested for violating a court order. So it can get a little ugly for this guy fairly fairly quickly. But again, you're looking at, you know, at least a month to to get this done, at which point, if the lot rent, so here's the thing from the mobile home park, too, if the lot rent's not being care, taken care of, then the, the, the mobile home park doesn't really care what your relationship is with the guy who's squatting. Right. They have a plot of land. There is a there is a presumably a contract because these these mobile home parks will typically have yeah. contracts saying, look, you know, you want to park here, you want to use our facilities and tap into our our electrical that kind of thing. Then you need to pay us this money every month. If you don't do it, then the you know we got to get your home removed. Mm. And this whole thing made even more complex set in this whole pandemic era, yeah, too. it is. Oh, it's man, Tasha. Tasha. So there's no easy answers for you, Tasha, but it's not impossible. Not a, we, we had uh, less conquerable questions here in the past, that's for sure. So uh, we'll pass your email along, Tasha, to Dave. He will shoot you information, and uh, hopefully we'll get this thing done. Yeah, that squatting thing, that, that needs to... That needs to change somehow, man. There's no way that someone you got to get the guy out of that, there, that, right? Yeah, and, and they're right. hiding under something that was set up to help people who were unjustifiably bounced from their homes and stuff like that. But then, obviously, humanity tends to ruin things. That's so right. there's always that element, huh? Unbelievable. Well, or or was it Mal- Malcolm? Ian Malcolm says in Jurassic Park, "Life will find a way." Thank you for listening to the Law Frog Radio Show with David McDivitt and Ross Ward on Kilo 94.3 FM, presented by McDivitt Law Firm.